Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. This is the Crochet Up and Down Easy Blanket. This is more for Christmas for me based on the colors. I have a crochet diagram that's going to be available for you. Just see the video description and there's a link. I've used the colors of grass, off-white, rose, soft sage, red, azure, soft pink, and off-white. At the time of filming this, I'm still in development, but the pattern will be updated in the video description as this gets done. So I'm using Karen one pound yarn for this and a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook. Because I was using Karen one pound yarn, you're going to notice is that you can get four repeats out of this particular yarn ball because it's so big. So I will be able to get this blue four times. So this is one and then two, three, four, and that can happen. And because I've used seven colors and basically just kind of looked at my stash, I really wanted that toy box feel to it. So without a lot of uh, chit chat, we're gonna get right into it today. This is an eight row repeat once you begin. Let's start now. So here's my work in progress. This is available for download already. And you're going to notice is that it's a multiple of 28 chains plus 18. So go 28, 28, 28. Every 28 equals a chevron. And this chevron with this size hook and yarn equals eight inches wide. So every 28 inches or 28 chains equals eight inches. So in this particular design, I have you chaining a 214 and that will give you a total inch count of 54 inches by the time all is said and done. So if you want to make this as a baby size, just remember it's a multiples of cha uh, 28 chains plus 18. So what we also have here is that there is a total of 101 grams per section that you'll see and you can figure that out and as I get more information I will update the video um, description area and include it with the free pattern. So at this time what we have is that rows number two through nine is going to be your repeat. So when you go to start row number one here and coming back across this is considered the wrong side and so you will want to start with your color with whatever the main uh, section is gonna be. And every time you hit a row nine, row nine is the next color of the next sequence. So as you are working your way through this, just keep that in mind. So let's begin now. So let's begin either chain 214 to match the size, but if you are customizing it, please chain in multiples of 28, 28, 28. And when you're happy with that, then just add 18 more stitches. So every 28 stitches is one of the chevrons as I mentioned. So please either ch chain 214 or multiples of 28 plus 18. And I'll be right back. Once you have your beginning chain done, you're gonna say, holy cow, it's huge. But once you start going in the up and down motion, the chain gets shorter in the width. So just don't uh, get the end of the chain and say, holy cow, it's a lot bigger than it's gonna be. Once you start going up and down, it will shrink. Let's begin row number one. So the edging on both sides is a portion of the chevron. So what I want you to go is fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and just turn it over to the back hump of the chain. I feel it's easier and just double crochet. So what you've just done now is that the first skipping of those chains plus this one puts two into the same stitch at the end. We're now going to do the next five double crochet. So let's do this. So one, two, three, four, So this is going in the down motion like you see in the diagram, so it's going down. So the next three chains are going to be used as the, as the valley of your chevron. So you're going to do a three together using the next three chains. So yarn over and going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold, and do the next one just the same way. So yarn over and into the next chain, pull through, pull through two and hold, and then do the third one. So by the time you have that done, you should see four loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all four. This is the very uh, bottom of your chevron. So now we're gonna head up. So the rest of them all be before you get to the edge is going to be 12 going up and then 12 coming down and you have to handle the peaks and the valleys. 
in between that. So we're going to go, and I'm not gonna count with you, so I'll just do it quietly, and we're going to do 12 double crochets going in the next 12 here. So we'll get one, So I've now just quietly done 12, and this is going in the up motion. So 12 going up. So verify that before you go too far. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. In the very next chain, you are going to put three double crochets into the same chain, and this is the very top of the chevron, so it's the peak. And so by putting three in there, it's going to cause the chain to bend so that the next portion is going down. Okay, so now we're going to head down. So if we went 12 going up, we're going to do 12 going down. So the next 12 will be double crochet, and I'll do that quietly. I've just done 12 and this is going in the down so that you see that naturally bends itself. So I want to verify. It's so important that you verify in the first time going down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So what I need you to do is that you're going to do the next three together. Okay, the Blue Jays are really vocal today. So we're going to put the next three together as a three together double crochet over the next three chains, pull those up, and then you are going to go 12 up, and then the next one will be three into the same one, 12 down, and then three together again, and you're gonna keep doing that. And you go all the way across, except for the very final, there will be a little bit left over, and that's where I'm gonna pick you up on the final slope going in the up motion. Please do the same repeating going across. So eventually you're gonna to come to the end of the line and you're gonna be in the down slope and there will be a little bit left over and the little bit left over is gonna be in the up slope. So after you have your 12 coming down, the next three will be a three together double crochet. So we have picking those up just like you have been before. And then you are gonna do five going in the up motion. So five double crochets going up. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And if your stitch counts are right, you're going to be left with one stitch. And in that last stitch, you need to put in two single crochet, or two double crochets, okay? So essentially what you have to think about here is that when you're doing this kind of motion, you have three in the main chevron here at the top, but because it's an edge, it only has two. So let's move on to row number two. So you're going to notice that single crochet in this pattern is uh, coming in and out throughout this whole thing. And you're going to notice this that sometimes it's slightly different and we'll talk about that when we get there. So for row number two, you're just gonna chain one and in the very first one, you'll put two single crochets in the first one. So like the double crochet, there's going to be five 
single crochet is going down. So the counts are still the same. So one, two, three, four, and five. And once you get used to this pattern and you can tell the visual difference between uh, where you are on the slopes, then you won't have to count as excessively in the future, depending on your skill level, of course. So the next three are going to be a single crochet, three together. So just going into the next one, yarn over, pull through. The next one after that, so this is considered the middle. Pull through and do the next one. Once you see the four loops, pull through all four. So how many single crochets are gonna go up? Hopefully you said 12 because that's the right answer. So you're gonna have 12 going up. So we can count those, so one, And the 12th is my next. So if you look at the middle one here, it consists of three stitches. So the middle one should be the, the 13th one, which is the one that is going to have in then three single crochets into the same stitch. And that forces the bend to go down in the next section. So as you go down, how many are you going down? That's right, it's 12. So let's do that. So just one and go all the way to 12. Okay, so I have 12 going down. And so the next three will be a single crochet three together. So if you can identify how the stitches look, you probably won't have to count as, excess as excessively. So the next three are gonna come together as a three together single crochet. So you're looking for the four on the hook, pull through. So what I want you to do is that I want you to continue the same idea going up. So you have 12 going up, three in the top one, 12 coming down, and then three together over the over the val or over the um, valley of this whole thing. So what I'll do is that I'll meet you on the edge and show you how to finish the edge, but just keep going up and down for what I just showed you. So I'm coming near to the edge and you got the three together at the base of the valley as normal. And then you have the final little section coming up. So you're gonna have five in a row going up. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And this, the sixth one is there, it's a turning chain. And in the turning chain, put in two single crochets. Go right into the chain work itself. Don't go into a space, like in between two posts right here. Okay, so turn your work and let's do row number uh, three and let me take you to the diagram and show you what you're up to. So row number three and also seven is the exact same thing. So what we have, it's a, it's a version of the Sumerai stitch. And what we have here is that in the edges here, you're gonna have two Sumerai stitches in a row. And then on the up peak, you're gonna have four. And on the down peak, you're gonna have four. So it's very easy to be able to count those to make sure that you're staying in alignment with each other. So let's begin row number three. So what I want to explain to you now is that when you start off, you're gonna chain three. And we always have to put that extra stitch in the very first one. But because it's a Sumerai stitch, you have to handle it slightly different. So coming into the very next two stitches, you're going to double crochet each. And the Sumerai stitch is going to go around the two double crochets you just created. And this Sumerai stitch that you're about to create creates that extra stitch that the edges need. So yarn over and going in between the posts and make sure you collect two of them. Yarn over, pull through and pull through two and two. So that double crochet just wrapped around those two. 
So you want to skip the next stitch and put a double crochet in the next two after that. So we have one and two, and then sumerai around those two. So yarn over, going around the two, pull through, pull through two, and two. So it creates that space that you're seeing in the pattern. So the next three stitches here are going to be a three together double crochet. So yarning over, starting in the very next stitch, pulling it through, pull through two, and do that three times in a row to start collecting your stitches. Okay, once you see the four, pull through all four. And now we're gonna do the Sumerai stitch going in the up motion in a moment. So let's go in the up motion, sorry with the dog, just had to close the studio door. So going in the up motion, we wanna skip the first stitch out and we want to double crochet the next two. And then we're gonna Sumerai around the two that you just created. Okay, so you wanna do that four times going all the way to the upslope. So skip the next one and double crochet in the next two. And then Sumerai. Essentially it's a double crochet with wrapped around two. Skip the next one, double crochet in the next two, and that's your repeating for Sumerai. It's only on the edging where it's slightly different. Skip the next one, Sumerai. Sorry, uh, double crochet in the next two, and then Sumerai. Now, the very next stitch is the middle one. And in that one here, we want to put in a double crochet, chain one and a double crochet. And that will then put us in the down motion going there. So you can easily count that you have four sumerize here. You have two on the edge. So let's head on down. So to head on down before, when we came out of this one here, we went right into the next stitch, but everything else now in the main chevrons, you were going to skip the first stitch out like you had been here. And so you'll double crochet in the next two stitches after that. and then Sumerai, and let's do that a total of four times. So this is number one, so skip the next stitch, double crochet the next two, okay, and we keep doing that all the way going in the down motion. Skip the next one. So row number seven is exactly the same of this. So once you understand how to do this, number seven will come really easily to you. So it's easy to kind of see that you have four sumerize after the point. So after the fourth one is done, you were going to notice is that you have the next three that are part of the base and those would be a three together, double crochet. So what I want you to do is that I want you to continue across. So you are going to skip the next one and Sumerai and you'll do the four going up. In the top peak, you will do one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet, and then four Sumerai's going down with the three together at the very um, base right here. And then keep doing up and down motions. And you're gonna see this. This stitch is reversible. So you're gonna notice the nice stitch work is happening with you there. So continue this across and I'll see you on the edge in just a moment. So once you come into the edge, the after the last Sumerai and you have the four going down on this side, you are going to put the next three together as double crochet. And then you're going to start Sumerai and going up. So it's chain one, sorry, skip one and double crochet the next two and the edge is the one you have to watch out for. So just Sumerai around the two. And you're going to skip one, and you notice that there's only two stitches left. You're gonna use those both for the Sumerai, so put a double crochet in both. You're gonna Sumerai, which creates the extra stitch that you need to stay in balance. And in the same last one where the second double crochet is, 
you are going to put in another double crochet there and that will keep your edging flat. So turn your work and let's begin row number four. So let's begin number four. I decided to use the back loops only, but if you don't want to, then please by all means don't. But I'm going to anyway. So I'm going to just chain up one and if you're new to crochet, then what happens is that there's two strands that make up a stitch. The, cl the closest strand to you is the front loop and the one furthest from you is the back loop. And so I only wanna play in the back loops the entire time, except for when I'm on a, on a uh, it's actually in every stitch actually. I don't know what I'm talking about. So when you chain up one, you are going to go in the back loop only and provide only uh, two single crochets into that one. So that is your edge to keep the balance. So how many are you gonna go down? The answer is five. So we're gonna do five single crochets in a row. And then once you have this, you have the next three, and those are gonna be a three together single crochet on the back loop only. If you decide that you don't really wanna do back loops and you're not in the mood for it, then just use the regular stitches. There is no crochet please, and that was just my own thinking to create a little bit of a line texture. And that was just my own free thought. So now I'm gonna do the next 12 in the back loops going all the way to the peak. We'll do that, so just I'll count quietly. Once I have my 12 coming up, this will take you to the last double crochet before the chain one space of the top peak. And in that top peak, just go into the regular space and just uh, provide three single crochets into that space. Starting in this one, this one's always somewhat buried. So just use your hook. And if I want the back loop only, uh, I'm gonna have to put my hook in and just isolate the back loop. Again, if you're using the regular stitches, you don't have to do that. So that's the first one of 12 going down. So let's go 12 down. Is 12 going down. Again, if you can identify, this is the main bottom. So it's the one before and the one after. That's your three together single crochet in the back loop only. And that's going to be your repeat then the whole time. So you'll go 12 up and then in the chain one space, you'll have three single crochets, 12 down, and then at the base, like you just did, three together single crochet, and you're going to do that across and I'll see on the edge in just a moment. Okay, once you're all the way across, you'll have your three together single crochet going up, and then you have your five going up on the edge. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then the turning chain here is gonna have, and you can just go into the regular stitch if you want to, and just put in two single crochets there to keep the balance. Okay, so that's what it will look like at this point. So let's turn and work and begin row number five. Row number five has faux popcorns. They're very easy to keep track of. So um, you have to keep your eyes on the back of it because this is currently is the back of the project, but the natural stitch work of what we're about to do will pop out the other side. So this here is the good side, the right side of the work. So you can always turn it and just double check things if you want to. So as you begin, you're going to just chain up one and use the regular stitches now and apply two single crochets into the first. 
then you are going to put in a treble into the next. So wrap on the hook twice and into the next one, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. So it's a very long stitch and when you use the next stitch, it naturally pops towards the back. So that's why we're using the back of the project right now so it pops to the good side. So then you'll put in two single crochets in a row and then pop, or sorry, do the treble again. So wrap and treble. And then finally, the next stitch is a single crochet. So when you're looking at an edge, you'll always see just two of these faux popcorns on the edge. The next three are going to be a three together single crochet. And to easy to remember, the next stitch is always a single crochet. So it was always a single crochet before you did the three together, and then it's always a single crochet after you've done that. So just remember that. Now you'll start with a treble, and there's going to be a treble here, followed by two single crochets in a row. And so there's gonna be a total count of four trebles going up. Just like the Sumerai stitch, there was four, there's gonna be four of these. So after you get two singles, treble, and then two singles again, and treble. And then two singles again, and then treble. And this is what I want you to check. We're near to the top, so you're gonna single crochet in the next one. See how there, there's three in there? The last one before the peak is just a single crochet by itself. And if you pop it towards you, you can see that there's one, two, three, and four. In the top peak here, you're going to put in three single crochet and then go down the other side. So remember that there was a single crochet before you put in the three, and there will be a single crochet after you put in the three. It's the easiest way to remember. So now the treble will start. And then going down, so we're gonna single crochet the next two, and then treble the next one. Single crochet the next two, treble the next one. Single crochet the next two and treble again, and we're getting very close to the bottom. And then single crochet the next one, and that'll be by itself. Okay, so one single, and if you flip it, you can see one, two, three, four, five, or you can see the four. So the next three are becoming three together single crochet. And you're gonna repeat that same idea going up and down. So you'll put in single crochet the next, and then treble followed by two, treble followed by two and etc. And you'll do this all the way to the peak. The, remember there's one single crochet before the peak, three in the peak, and then three after, and then you're gonna go down in the same motion. And when you flip this over, you're going to be able to see that these are going into position as you see. So there's always four trebles going up and down. And what I'll do is that I'll meet you on the very final edge in just a moment. So I'll be right back. So I now have the three together single crochet and I'm approaching the edge. So the next one, as I mentioned, is always gonna be a single crochet and then it will be a treble. And then you're gonna single crochet in the next two. Okay, it's gonna be a treble into the next one. And then the last one is gonna have two single crochets in it. So when you flip it over, you're gonna see all the texture work that has happened in the last row. Let's begin the next row. Okay, row number six is the exact same as row number two. So it's just a single crochet row. So you're just gonna chain up one and apply two single crochets into the first stitch. There's no back looping required. And then you have five coming down. So just watch these trebles, they tend to bounce backward. So just, you got the one, 
and the treble here is right in front of your face. So the top one is right there. You get used to it. So you got two, three, four, and five. And the easiest way to remember this one now is that the treble is always the last one here at the valley, and the next three are going to be the single crochet three together. Always try to look for stuff that will remind you just in case you feel like you're going off the rails. So then you'll start and do 12 going up. So we have one, Once I have my 12 coming up, it should land me on the middle one of the grouping of three as the next one as the peak. So I have my 12 in, and so the next one is just three into this next one. So it's an easy row. So you'll have 12 coming down, you'll have the three together stitch, 12 going up, and in the peak, you have three single crochets and you're gonna go up and down in that same motion. And you can see the texture is really picking up now and I will see at the edge in just a moment. So as you come across then the very final, there's going to be five going up. So one, two, three, four, and five. And the very last one has two single crochets into the same stitch. Okay, let's move on to your next row, number seven. So let's begin number seven. It's the same as the Sumerai stitch for number three. The difference is, is that you wanna use the front loops only. This gets a little bit of texture, but if you don't want to, then don't. So there's no crochet place as I mentioned. So we're gonna chain three and using the front loop only. So we've been using the back loops to this point. We wanna just use the front loop only. And this creates a ridge on the other side because the other side is the good side of the work. Starting in the next two stitches, in the front loop only, you're going to double crochet and you're going to sumerai around the two that you just created. And what this is doing, because you're using the front loops, it's creating a ridge on this side. So skip the next one and double crochet the next two. and then sumerai the one, the two that you just made. So there is two sumerais that go down on an edge. So there is the two. And so the next three stitches in a row are going to be in the, the front loops only, and it's a three together double crochet. Now we're gonna go up the other side and it's just like what you already knew before. So you skip one and put double crochet in the next two and sumerai the two. So it's just what you did in row number three. So you'll have a total of four sumerais coming up and then the next stitch is gonna be one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet in the top peak and then starting coming down, you'll have four sumerais going down. And then the bottom one here, it'll be uh, three together, double crochet. So exactly what you learned before, but because you are using the front loops now, you end up creating the second ridge that kind of highlights these full popcorns in the middle. So please do this all the way across for row number seven. So I'm coming to the edge. I have my three together, all within the front loops only. And then as you come up the uh, final, so skip one, Double crochet in the next two. Sumerai around the two. Okay, skip the next one and double crochet the last two that you have in a row. Okay, Sumerai. And then don't forget, you still need to put in a double crochet in the very last one that you had done, uh, done the first section with. Okay, so the double crochet, the last double crochet here shares the same one. So that keeps the balance and you can see the texture has been created on this side for that. So that might be desirable for you. And we're gonna go for row number eight next. So row number eight is back to single crochet, regular stitches. 
and row number eight would be the final of using one color. So just chain up one, two singles into the first, and you got five going down, three together, 12 going up, three into the top peak, 12 going down, and etc. So please go all the way with the single crochet that you already know, and please do that across. Before I go too far, remember the top peak is the chain one space. So there's a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, the three are in the chain one space because it was a sumerai stitch below it. So I never stated that, so here you go. <laughs> I'll see you at the end of the row for a reel next time. So as you're coming up at the end of the row, remember you still have your five going up. And then the very last one, the turning chain, go right into the top of the chain, not to a space, and put in two single crochets. Now this is the end of the color, if you wanna keep the color sequence as per the pattern. So you're going to wanna finish off your color, weave in your ends, okay? And then just turn your work, and then start your next row, which is number nine, which is still part of the repeat, but it's now the new color for the next sequence. So let's begin number nine. So number nine is technically similar to number one, and the only difference is that we're not playing with the chain anymore. So you're going to attach into the first one, and you are going to chain three. So one, two, three, and double crochet into the first one here. So you have the two into the same stitch. So now um, what you wanna do is you wanna do five double crochets going down one, two, three, four, and five. Now, the next three will become three together, double crochet, and then you'll have 12 double crochets going up. Then the top peak, you'll have then three double crochets into the same stitch, and then 12 going down, and then three together again and you're going to do that all in the up and down motion all the way across so the three together don't forget is just what you already did before with the several rows below and so then 12 up three in the top 12 down and i'll see you on the edge in just a moment now it's time for some cheating techniques for whatever reason that may happen to you, you may realize that you only had 11 going up instead of 12, and then you realize that you've somehow missed a stitch. If you have accidentally skipped a stitch and you're missing one, just put in two double crochets into the same stitch and keep on moving. Okay, it's barely noticeable in this design if you do that. If, for example, you have 13 stitches instead of 12 and you have an extra stitch by accident, then what you can just do is that you can put two stitches together. So just wrapping, pulling through and through, and that just made the two stitches just become one so that you end up getting back into the right sequence for the numbers. Okay, so if that ever happens to you, it's really easy to hide that kind of stuff. And that's something that you can keep in mind. You can also do something like that in the single crochet rows. I would not do it in anything like the Sumerai stitches that you have or in the treble work. So only concentrate if you have to make up for the stitches uh, in a regular double crochet or a regular single crochet. You could technically do it in a back loop single crochet one as well, but don't do it in any of the fancy stitches. So I'm at the very edge here, the double crochet. So you're gonna do your five going up. and this should leave one stitch left over, and you'll have two double crochets into the final stitch. Okay, so what we do here is that we have video chapters in our videos. So you can use the video description and go back, and you wanna pick up row number two. So rows number two through nine is the repeat. Remember the ninth row has to change the color, and this would be considered a ninth row right here. Okay, if you wanna keep that in, in your mind. So it, it makes a difference of the sequence when you're doing this. If you are new to crochet and don't know how to change off your colors, so let's just say we wanted to change the colors here, which we did. If you wanna use your tapestry needle 
If you use a hook and try to weave it in, it's definitely gonna fall out on you. So you wanna make sure that you are going to use a tapestry needle to hide in your loose ends. So favor the back of the project. And so you can tell there's no ridges on this side. So this is your ridges. So this is the good side of the work. So favor the back and you are just going to drag this and drag it through the same color that you're working with. So don't drag a blue through this orange if you were doing the same coloring. So you wanna drag it through once. And if you separate the plies, it's a lot better than separating just the strands because it'll get really stuck in really quite beautifully. So going up and down in the motion, and back and forth a total of three times in order to carry that through. So any loose ends you're gonna to wanna to do that with and are really hide it in position so it doesn't fall out on you. So hiding it in with a crochet hook is not gonna help you at all. So this would be how you would do this little blanket and it's a really neat concept. And uh, when I am working my way through it, so once I have more detail, I'll provide that in the um, pattern. And this is it for today. We hope you have a good one and I'll see you again real soon.